In this video, we're going to work through the solution of uh, a difference of two means um, problem. So we think through a three distribution diagram to help us figure this out. We're going to have some kind of a population. There's going to be a parameter that we're interested in studying in that population. We'll take a sample. We'll calculate a statistic that will approximate that parameter of interest. We'll think about the distribution of all of the statistics with that particular sampling method. Uh, there'll be some theory that will say that <clears throat> under the appropriate assumptions this is going to be normally distributed for example and uh, the mean of this distribution is going to be the same as this parameter. We'll need to find the standard deviation, often called the standard error, of the distribution of this sample statistic and from there we'll be able to find our confidence interval. So let's begin to fill in the parts. In our case the situation is that we've really got two populations uh, with a variable x1 and x2. We're interested in the mean of that distribution and the mean of this distribution and what we're studying is the difference in those two means. That's our population parameter that we want to study. So we're going to take a sample from the first population of size n1 and a sample from the second population of size n2 and we'll calculate an estimate for mu1 and mu2 which will be an x bar the, the sample statistic and x bar 1 and x bar 2. So we're going to be interested in over here is going to be a distribution of the x bar 1 minus the x bar 2. Now of course we only have one x bar 1, x bar 2 that we found, but we're thinking about all the possible samples of these sizes and the x bar 1 minus x bar 2 that we've got under the appropriate conditions, the distribution of these will be normally distributed with a particular mean and a standard deviation. Now since we're using the difference of means, the distribution down here is going to need to be a t distribution. We'll need to do a t test here. And uh, so we'll also need to know the degree of freedom involved here. So using this three distribution diagram as a guide, let's begin to build our script. When I build a script, I like to put in the information in the same order that it's presented. That way it's easier to come back and check for errors. So x bar 1 is going to be 28. So in the interest of time, I've put the other information in here, n1, s, s1, x bar 2, n2, and and the standard deviation for that particular sample. The other piece of information that's given in the problem is that we want a 90% confidence level. So there I've got the confidence level at 90%. Now in studying a confidence level, we, we start down in this distribution and begin to build that confidence level. So what we want to do is centered here uh, about, about the mean, which is zero, we want to, to put our 90% of the population between these two values. So outside of this confidence level, in this tail and this tail combined, there'll be another 10%. That's called the alpha level. And the amount that's in this one tail up here will be alpha divided by 2. Once we've done that, then what we'll be interested in doing is finding this particular number on the t-axis. That's going to be our critical t-value. That will tell us how many standard deviations we need to be away from the mean to be able to have 90% of the population uh, within that, that many standard deviations. So the next thing that we're going to do in our script is calculate this alpha divided by 2. So here we are in our script. Notice that we'll be able to find alpha 
easily by uh, simply taking 1 minus the confidence level. Because writing alpha divided by 2 is difficult in R, I'm just going to call that A. And it's going to be alpha divided by 2. That's the area in that upper tail. Now, functions in R always worry about the, the area below a particular value. So if I'm looking for this quantile right here, this particular critical T value, some times a textbook will call that t sub c, okay, then, then I'll need to know this red area back here, okay. So I know that the total area under this curve is 1, and I know this area above it is alpha divided by 2, so this red area below this critical t value will be 1 minus the alpha divided by 2. Go back to the script. Okay, so working with the t distribution, we're going to also need to know the degree of freedom here, and we're going to use the Welch Satterwhite uh, formula for that degree of freedom. So, checking the textbook for the Welch Satterwhite uh, equation, we put in the following information. We uh, build these two. standard error variances, essentially, for each of the two populations. Now, it turns out that, that those two values are also used in the formula for, the, for, this, for this standard error. So let's just calculate the standard error while we're right here. The standard error is just the square root of S1 squared divided by N1. That's what A is, plus S2 squared divided by N2. That's what B is. Okay, and, but now we're also ready to calculate the degree of freedom in the welch satterwhite equation. That equation is a fairly complicated one, so be careful when you write in this particular formula for the degree of freedom. Now that we know the degree of freedom, we can, can find this t-critical value just by using a qt function. So qt of 1 minus a, remember a was alpha divided by 2, so that's finding that right area below the critical t value, and of course we know the degree of freedom. So now we know the number of standard deviations we need to be away uh, to have whatever that critical level was, to have 90% of the population within that many standard deviations of the mean. So the margin of error, the distance that we need to be away from the mean, is going to be the number of standard deviations away from the mean times the standard deviation. So that's our, our margin of error. Now because we're going to be interested in the difference of x bar 1 and x bar 2, I'm going to just make that an object called x bar d for, for difference. Then that x bar d minus the margin of error will be the lower bound of our confidence interval and x bar plus d, uh, x, I'm sorry, x bar d plus the margin of error is going to be the upper bound. So if we run that particular script, then there's our two results. And what I did was just copy that amount, put it in for the lower bound, copy that amount, put it in for the upper bound, and submitted the result, and, and everything was okay. Okay, so there's the idea. Good luck.